Apod sheets. Mm. This is property valuation. Part two. Apod sheet terms continued. Capital expenditures. Any money spent to improve the property value rather than to maintain it. For example, a new roof makes the property better and increases the property's value. The new roof is therefore a capital expenditure. This is in contrast to something like roof maintenance, which does not increase the property value and instead merely maintains the existing value and is therefore an operating expense. Capital expenditures are usually not deducted for tax purposes, but it can be depreciated. See taxes section on government financing programs. For pur purposes of APOD sheets, debt service and capital expenditures are never operating expenses. With the financials out of the way, we can dig into the different ways to value investment properties. The gross rent multiplier. The gross rent multipl multiplier is how many months of gross rent it would take for a property to pay for itself. It can either be a monthly or annual number. To find out if a property is a good value, an investor would look at a recent rental property sale in an area and calculate how many months rent it would take to pay for their sales price. The investor can then use that information to determine if an investment property is a good deal and how much they should offer. Note that the gross rent multiplier is a very simple number and it doesn't take into account operating expenses, which can significantly impact an investor's return. It is therefore only useful when comparing single family homes to other single family homes. Gross rent multiplier math is sales price divided by gross rent equals gross rent multiplier. The capitalization rate, cap rate. The capitalization rate is the percentage of a property's value an, invest an investor can expect to receive as net operating income, NOI, every year. It is commonly it is a commonly used metric among real estate investors and lenders since it provides a quick way to determine if an investment property is worth investing in or if it is priced far out of line with the market. It is often more useful than the gross rent multiplier because it takes into account the costs of running the property. Cap rate seems a little simple because it is. If a property is worth looking at, an investor might perform a more in-depth analysis of the property's financials before purchasing it, but the cap rate is often used to get a quick read on an investment's potential. The cap rate math is NOI, which is net operating expenses, divided by sales price equals the cap rate. Cash on cash return on investment. The cash on cash method is similar to the cap rate, except that it is the return on an investor's cash investment in the property rather than the property's total value. This gives the investor a metric to determine how the property is performing compared to their investment goals or compared to their other investments on the market. Cash on cash return on investment is the percentage of your total investment received as annual cash flow. Cash on cash return math. Cash flow divided by dollars invested equals cash on cash return on investment. Rate of return. The rate of return is a method to calculate the current or potential profit from an investment. It also provides a way to compare one investment to another. It is calculated by comparing the difference between the current value and the initial value and then dividing by the initial value. The cost approach. The cost approach uses construction costs to estimate property value. It is used for buildings and improvements that lack adequate sales comparison data, either because they are unique churches, historical buildings, etc., or brand new. 
Since these properties often also lack income, the cost to build the property is used as a valuation method instead. This method can also be used to estimate the value if a real estate market might begin to attract competition to form new construction. If existing properties are selling for the same or more than the cost of the new construction, expect competition. To value a property using the cost approach, an appraiser estimates the new cost of a reproduction or replacement of the property's improvements at today's prices. The appraiser then subtracts from that number depreciation to come to an estimate of the value of the improvements. The value of the land is then calculated using sales comparison approach and added to the cost to reach a final value. The valuation math via the cost approach is relatively straightforward. An appraiser might calculate the following. The estimated replacement costs minus the depreciation costs, which equals the estimated improved value of the property, plus the estimated land value, calculated using the sales comparison approach to equal the final estimated property value. Estimating replacement and reproduction costs. Comparative unit method. The cost of recently constructed similar properties divided by their square footage to produce a price per square foot of <clears throat> construction. Price divided by square feet equals price per square foot. This is the replacement cost. Using this method, we can estimate the cost of building a similar property. Unit in place method evaluates the value of systems and components, for example, the roof or HVAC systems in the property used for both replacement and repro reproduction costs. Quality or quantity survey method estimates the cost of rebuilding the property exactly as it appears today using local construction costs, supply costs, permitting costs, etc. It is used for the reproduction cost and tries to estimate the cost of creating an exact replica of the subject property. Estimating depreciation costs. Remember, all of the methods above estimate a new property value. If the property is not new, the appraiser must contend with any loss in value associated with the aging of the property, known as depreciation. Accrued depreciation is the depreciation that has already occurred when the property is purchased, while remainder depreciation will occur after the purchase. The straight line method of calculating depreciation calculates the annual loss in value based on some economic life for the property. Usually, the IRS defines economic lives as 27.5 years for residential property and 39 years for commercial property. While the cost to cure method calculates the depreciation costs based on how much it will cost to repair any curable depreciation, which means depreciation that the owner can fix on the property, plus any loss associated with incurable depreciation or depreciation that the owner cannot fix. Physical deterioration, costs associated with aging, physical wear and tear, and deferred maintenance, for example, a leaky roof. Physical deterioration is a type of curable depreciation because the property owner could fix these issues to improve the property's value. Functional obsolescence is a loss of value due to a poor original design outdated design or changes in building standards and market preferences. Functional obsolescence is also a type of curable depreciation. Examples might include a seven-story building with no elevator, a six-bedroom home with only one bathroom, a retail space without parking, etc. And lastly, economic obsolescence. A loss in value due to external factors that can have a negative effect on the value of a property. This is an incurable depreciation because the property owner cannot fix it. Examples might include changes in zoning, high foreclosure rates in the area, and the loss of public transportation, etc. Okay, and that is property valuation part two.